Hi, uh, welcome all of you. This is in, uh, we are in week seven, and uh, so I see that many of you are working very hard on the assignments and watching videos regularly. So that's a very good thing, and I am quite happy that uh, there is uh, there is a lot of momentum, and you are able to catch up with uh, many of the assignments that were given. Uh, there are lots of announcements that have been put out last week. So uh, please go and read the announcements and ensure that uh, if you have if you have not done registration for the exam, please go ahead and register for the exam. Uh, also there have been announcements about the registration process itself and what is going to be in the exam. So in summary uh, for 50 percent of the final mark that you are going to get after certification for the 50 percent uh, you will we will take best 3 assignments out of the several assignments that are given. So even if you have lost out on the first few assignments you have time to catch up and do the other assignments. The other thing is with respect to the certification exam we also announced the policy that uh, many of the questions in the final exam will come from the uh, assignments itself. So it will not be the exactly the same questions but the model of the final exam will be very similar to the kind of questions that are there in the assignments. So in some sense the assignments are supposed to get you ready for uh, both the field and exposure to the field and uh, as a immediate thing it is also getting you ready for the exam. In that sense it is necessary for you to do uh, as many assignments as you can so that you are more comfortable when you take the test. So in this week we are going to do something uh, slightly in a very different way. So what we are going to do is we are going to take a specific problem which is written up uh, as an algorithm and we are going to see how this algorithm is going uh, how this algorithm can be implemented in hardware. So the problem we are going to take up is design of what is called a GCD machine. So GCD stands for greatest common divisor uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take the algorithm and write it down step by step understand what it does and see how we can translate that into hardware and we will also see how to take that hardware and translate that into uh, very log. So we have a quite a few things at hand but let us start with the GCD algorithm itself. So GCD algorithm is attributed this, this particular version of GCD algorithm that I am going to use is called Euclid's algorithm. So Euclid's GCD algorithm is roughly like this. So I am going to write it on the left side. So let us say there are two numbers and I want to find the GCD of that. So I need to go and read the numbers from the user. So imagine this as a template for some maybe a program written in C or C++ or it does not matter. So I am not going to write syntactically correct code as long as you understand what the meaning of whatever I am writing is that is enough. So uh, Euclid's algorithm is essentially this you go and read the numbers and we have a loop which is running as a while loop while a is not equal to b. So if a and b are not the same so this one works for if a and b are both positive. So if a and b are not the same then Euclid's algorithm is as follows if a is less than b then subtract a from b else. So this else, else will be true only if a is actually greater than b. So we have started with this check while a is not equal to b. So we already know that uh, if I have to execute this if condition then a should not be equal to b. So what are the 3 possibilities given 2 numbers a can be equal to b, a can be less than b or a can be greater than b. So while a is not equal to b which means either a is less than b or a is greater than b. So if a is less than b subtract a from b otherwise subtract b from a and so this is end of the if statement and this is end of the while loop. At the end this while loop will stop or it will terminate only when a equals to b and at that point a is actually a or b either one is actually the GCD. So this is the crux of Euclid's algorithm. So let me go over it again. You read the two numbers and if A and B are already the same, 
they are already the greatest common divisors of each other. So if I give you number like what is the GCD of 10 and 10, so 10 is the GCD of 10 and 10. So you then if A is equal to B, uh, that is the GCD itself. Otherwise, you keep running a loop till A becomes B, and the and the transformation that we do is if A is less than B, subtract B from subtract A from B. Else, we know that A is actually greater than B. In that case, subtract B from A. So let me do a few examples. So I will take one small example first. So let us say I want to find out the GCD of 42 and let us say 16. Right? I want to find the GCD of 42 and 16. So A is initially 42 and B is initially 16. So I want to find the GCD of this. So since A is greater than B, so A is not equal to B, so the while loop is uh, this condition is true. So is A less than B? No, L A is actually greater than B. So what I am going to do is I am going to take 42, subtract 16 from it and put it again in A. So this is for A and this is for B. So 42 minus 16 is 26. Now I have 26 comma 16. So I, ha I run through this condition once more. A is still not equal to B. So I do 26 minus 16, right? So that is 10. So now A becomes 10 and B becomes 16. At this point, B is greater than A. So we need to subtract A from B. So I subtract it. So this is 10 and 16 minus 10 is 6. Then I have 10 and 6. So 10 is greater than 6. So I will subtract one from the other. Then I have 4 comma 6. Then 4 and 6, 6 is greater than 4. So I will subtract 4 from 6. So I have 2 comma 4 and 4 and 2 I will subtract and now at this point A is equal to B. So GCD of 42 and 16 is 2. So this is easy because 42 is 40 plus 2. So it, it GCD is not, uh, so it is an even number and it is actually in, turn, in this case happens to be the smallest even number 2. So let me take uh, another example. Let us say I want to find out the GCD of uh, 60 and uh, 45. So A is 60 and B is 45 let us say. So again let us do this. So 60 minus 45 is 15 and on the other side you have 45 itself. Then 45 is greater than 15 so I subtract that. So I get 15 and 30. So now 15 and 30 again 30 is greater than 15. So now it is 15. At this point both A and B are equal and we have GCD is 15. So this is what I want to do. So I want to repeatedly subtract so that uh, I get to this uh, GCD. At this point I can stop and print A. So this is the overall crux of the algorithm and let us see how to translate this in terms of hardware. So what I am going to do is I am going to show the algorithm and to think in terms of hardware we need to do a few things. So let us start with this particular setup. So I am going to leave the algorithm as it was before. So this is the algorithm that I had and let us see how to do all of these things. So if you want to think in terms of hardware, there is A equal to read and B equal to read. Somewhere we need to get inputs from the user. So let us not worry about that. The first thing I want to think about is how to take this algorithm and there is there seems to be a loop that is running and I need some control of the loop, but I also have various things that I have to do here. So let us see what are the different things that I need to do. I, so there is some reading from the user that I am going to ignore for now. So if A and B are put in registers, I somewhere if I have control over A and B being put in registers, I will use them. Now let us look at these things. If A is not equal to B, right? so this seems to indicate that I need to be able to compare A and B. So A compare with B. I need some hardware which will do that because I want to compare A and B. So if I want to compare A and B, I can look at each and every bit position and see if the bit positions are equal or I can do it in several ways. So I need, I need to compare. Then if A is less than B, again this is actually comparison. So this is not just bitwise comparison, we need to do arithmetic comparison. So it looks like we, we need another comparison. So we need a comparator. A comparator 
is a piece of hardware which can take uh, it's a circuit which can take two numbers a and b and compare a and b and tell us whether a is less than b a is equal to b or a is greater than b so if a is less than b there seems to be a need for a comparator so the else is also going to come from the comparator so if you want to be more careful we can say that else if a is greater than b the moment i say that again this needs a comparator the comparator is going to be a circuit which will compare a and b fine then i look at this b equals b minus a and a equals a minus b so this seems to indicate that i need to be able to subtract one from the other so i need a subtractor so so far what i have realized is i will need some place to store a and b so for a i am going to have a register for b i am going to have a register so if i store them in registers remember registers are a bunch of flip flops which can take parallel in and which can give parallel out so i have two registers a and b and it looks like there are several comparison operations that are happening if a is not equal to while a is not equal to b a less than b a greater than b there are three kinds of uh, relationships between two numbers and i'm i will need a comparator for that I, the comparator will tell me whether it's equal greater than or less than given two numbers finally this one seems to indicate that i'll need to be able to subtract one from the other so we also need what is called a subtractor so this we didn't look at arithmetic circuits in the course so far so what we are going to do in verilog is do a high level description but uh, we can talk about the actual circuitry that goes into comparator and subtractor in the next week's class so let's 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 say we are here so far so this is actually fairly easy to understand it's not complicated right so given a piece of algorithm all i have figured out is for the basic arithmetic operations i have marked down what kind of hardware is required so as of now i don't know how many hardware units i need for each one of them so we will come to that in a little while so so far i know that i need a subtractor i need a comparator and i need two registers one for a and one for b so that that i know at least i need two registers a and b because a and b are supposed to be two different numbers now let's take one step forward so again i'm going to keep the algorithm as it is and let's take one step forward if i go and look at a and b it looks like i need to get something from the external world right so i want a i want a and let's see where it's coming from a can come from the external world so i'm going to call that input as in1 so i'm so we are thinking in terms of hardware so i need to bring in pins from the external world i'll call those set of pins in1 and b is also getting something from the external world so i'm not connecting it yet uh, for a particular reason so i'll show that in a little while so there are two inputs coming from the external world in1 and in2 and i i have two registers a and b so i have two registers a and b so i'm going to call this register a and this register b now let's go and look at what else is happening so if i go and look at this statement b equal to b minus a so b is on the left side of this statement and b is on the left side of this statement so for two statements we have b on the left side so if you think in terms of hardware what it means is b can take one of two values so b can either read from the external world or b can take a value from something else so this b minus a is supposed to come from a subtractor so if i have a circuit which can take two numbers and if it can subtract and give me the results so this result could also feed to the register b so either b is getting it from the external world or it's going to get it from a subtractor so whenever you have a if then else kind of condition so either it is coming from here or it is coming from here from one of these places so immediately what should strike to you is we need a multiplexer there because this is going to take one of two values either coming from the external world or something which is coming from locally right so what i need is in some sense i will need a mux right and it can 
come from the external one of the inputs could come from the external world and the other one will have to figure out where it should come from. Similarly for A the input could come either from the external world or it could come from this operation A equals A minus B. So, all I have done is I have looked at A and B they are on the left side in four four different locations. So, B is on the left side in two different places, A is on the left side in two different places. So, if I have as many places as I uh, as A is on the left side, I will need that big a multiplexer. So, if I see A on the left side four times, I will need a 4 to 1 multiplexer. If I see A on the left side three times, I will still have a 4 to 1 multiplexer because uh, I cannot design a 3 to 1 multiplexer. And in this case, A is either here either receiving external input or it is coming from this result of A minus B. So, if I put a subtractor here and let us say this subtractor is going to give me A minus B. So, I, I have to design the circuit, I have to do a lot of things to get the whole thing working, but if I have a circuit uh, which can produce A minus B, then either A or A minus B should be chosen so that it goes to A and similarly if I put another subtractor which can give me B minus A right, then B can either take the value B minus A or it can take something from the external world. So, so we have taken one more step in this step what we have done is we have figured out that it is not only the subtractors and comparators that are required we also need and, and registers we also need some multiplexer. Now, let us let us see what else is needed. So, for the subtractor let us say there are two inputs and you need to subtract one from the other at some level you need to take this line A and connect it to this and you need to take B which is the output of this register and connect it to this. So, if it uh, so, if this subtractor subtracts whatever is val whatever values are there on this input and uh, subtract from sorry subtract the right side 1 from the left side 1, then if we supply A to the left side and B to the right side we will get A minus B. Similarly, the same subtractor design I can use only that I will supply B to the left side and A to the right side and that will give me B minus A. So, so far what we have is we have uh, we have a rudimentary setup, we have a rudimentary setup for not only what values are supposed to be kept where. So, we have two registers A and B which can either take the value from the external world or it can take values from something local. So, you can see that it is starting to resemble a sequential circuit. So, there seems to be a register and there seems to be a path that is coming through some combinational logic back to the register. Similarly, uh, something that goes through here coming through some logic and coming back to the register. So, the only other thing that we do not have is uh, th there seems to be this need for a comparator right it is supposed to take A and B. So, we need to take A and B and we are going to need a comparator and this comparator is supposed to give three single bit lines. So, we are going to have this left side bit on if A is greater than B, the middle bit on if A is equal to B and the rightmost bit on if A is less than B. So, let us assume that there is a black box called a comparator which can do that. So, there will be three output lines and one of these output lines will definitely be on because if you, if you are given two numbers A and B, one of these should definitely be on. Okay. So, we seem to have various rudimentary things in place. There are a few things that are still missing out. So, I said A and B are registers and if A and B are registers, then I need some kind of a clock and what not that is coming in. So, that is a bit understandable. So, I can I need registers and registers need clocks, it, it may need a reset signal and what not. So, that is there. There is something else that is missing which is what the muxes select lines. So, these muxes have select inputs right, we need to figure out what this select lines are 
and this is not something that is coming from the external world right. So, as a circuit we need to be able to take the external inputs and these muxus select lines are not going to come from the external world. This in 1 and in 2 are the only things that are coming from so are, are, are the inputs that are coming from the external world and somehow if I am going to make a chip then I need to ensure that there is some correct sequencing that is going to happen. So, these muxus need some select lines and uh, so I will call these lines A underscore load for loading A and B underscore load for loading B. So, if A underscore load is 1 I am going to load from the external world if it is 0 I am going to take it from the subtractor. Similarly, if B underscore load is 1 I am going to take it from the external world and if it is 0 I am going to take it from the subtractor. So, the thing is how do you get A load and B load and there are these three input lines A greater than so there are three output lines A greater than B, A equal to B and A less than B. Somehow we need to stitch all of this together so that this circuit can be put in motion. So, right now what we have is we have a circuit which is completely combinational. So, uh, we have various elements but what we do not have is in some sense the kind of marching instructions that have to be given so that we can move data from one place to the other, when to start evaluating this, when to stop evaluating and so on we do not have any of those. So, we will see how to do all of that in the next lecture. So, what we have done so far is we have looked at the basic algorithm on which is on the left side here and we have come up with some kind of a hardware diagram which is on the right side. So, I am going to try and connect these two and come up with a complete description as a picture and we will take that picture and start writing Verilog for that. So, I will stop this uh, video lecture here and in the next video lecture we will see the notion of data path and a controller.